Hi, I'm Dr. Proctor with Beltline Health, and today we're going to talk about why it's so difficult, and really not even to lose weight, but to keep that weight off. I see this over and over again. It's the same frustration that I hear from new patients day in and day out over and over again. Doc, I've done everything. I've gone through all the different weight loss programs. I've tried the weight loss pills. My doctor's done all kinds of tests. We just can't figure it out. My trainer can't figure it out. I will lose weight for a period of time and then um, weight always comes back. What's wrong with me? Well, I'm here to tell you that nothing's wrong with you. So let's, let's kind of break this down in a historical perspective, if you will, okay? First of all, you have to understand that fat tissue, well, it's called adipose tissue, is a necessary organ, all right? Every living animal out there has a layer of fat on them. Why do we have it? It is our backup fuel source. The gasoline, if you will, that gets us through our day is generally glucose. It's the easiest thing for our bodies to break down and run on, but glucose isn't always available. Now, to us it, it is, but think about wild animals. Think about humans in the first few thousand ex years of existence of us when we didn't have uh, uh, fast food on every corner, all right? People, there was a time when people had to forage for food every day and food wasn't always readily available. And when they couldn't find anything and they had used up their circulating glucose, then they had to rely on their fat stores to bridge them or keep them alive until they could find food again. So our brains, which went through their formal processing and programming thousands and thousands of years ago, learned that if we could add more fat tissue, that would be a survival advantage. The more fat you have on you, the longer you could survive in the absence of food. So our brains and our bodies became very efficient at taking in excess calories and creating more fat stores. What's the problem with that? Well, you take that construct and now you put it in 2021 when we do have fast food on every corner. We have Georgia's sweet tea and soft drinks and all these different donut stores and delivery food pizza and all these kind of things, right? Almost every day we consume more calories than our bodies actually need. We're taking these excess calories and we're creating more fat. The problem with that is that every time you've added fat throughout your life, your brain will recalibrate that as your new normal. What does that mean? Our brains keep us alive by managing normals. If I drew your electrolytes today, drew your blood to check your electrolytes, I know pretty close to what those numbers would be. I also know that if I check them a year from now, they're gonna be the same amount because your brain needs all your electrolytes to be within a certain narrow range to keep you alive. If you donated blood today, we would decrease your circulating red blood cell level, but then if I rechecked you in a week or so, you're gonna be right back where you started and there's nothing you could do to prevent that. Nobody would ever say, well, you know what? You didn't have the willpower to keep your hemoglobin down. All your body tissues, everything about your body lives within certain parameters and your brain keeps it there. So I wake up one day and I decide, you know what? I know I've got too much weight. I need to lose 100 pounds, 200 pounds. I'm gonna to go to whatever commercially available diet out there. I'm gonna do what my neighbor says I should do or my doctor says I should do. And I'm gonna to try to lose some weight. Well, how do I do that? Well, there's different types of diets, right? You can go on the low carb diets, the keto diets, the high protein diets, all these different things that are generally an effort to take in less glucose or spread out my time between meals to, in order to get rid of my circulating glucose. So I spend more time using fat as my primary fuel source. And as, in doing so, I'm decreasing my fat stores and getting smaller and, and trying to achieve my goal. But here's the problem. When you've gone on these diets, when you've done these things, what you've generally noticed is that you will lose weight for a period of time and then the weight loss stops. I don't understand what's going on. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I'm following the diet to the T. I just can't lose any more weight. I've also seemed to have lost my motivation to work out. I'm tired all the time. I'm not getting out the door. I'm not going to the gym. A couple of physiologic processes have occurred here. You see, it doesn't matter if you start off with 2% body fat or 50% body fat your brain will only allow you to use a certain percentage of your fat stores, and then it'll try to conserve it, which is why you will lose weight for a period of time. Then your brain will slow your metabolism to the point where you're not gonna lose any more fat. You're gonna stop right there. You'll notice also at that same time, this is when the diet just got really hard. I'm hungry all the time. I go to sleep hungry, I wake up hungry. I'm eating things I know I shouldn't eat because I'm so hungry all the time. I'm quote unquote falling off of my diet. What's happened also is not only has your metabolism slowed, 
your hunger hormones have been elevated through the roof and they will remain in this elevated state for weeks to months until you've put that weight back on. There's really nothing that can be done about that. People will say, you know, I still eat healthy, but I can't seem to lose any weight. It's not about food volume. It's not about the types of foods you're eating or anything. Your weight's going to be maintained by your body because that's your body's job. So where then does bariatric surgery come in? Well, that's a whole nother video that we'll talk about, but bariatric surgery actually will create a metabolic shift in your body where it will decrease your, your resting weight or how much weight your brain thinks you should be carrying around. That's really the only way we know of creating that, that change, that physiologic shift in how much fat your brain thinks you should have is through bariatric surgery. So tune into our video where I talk a little bit more about that. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to our channel.